All right, welcome back to the Morning Update Show. My name is Omari Salisbury, and I'll be honest with you, it's an honor and a pleasure join, join, joined here today. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, by my mom, yeah. Um, uh, Reverend Harriet Walden, but you know, I, so I, I see on the stream, everybody's like, hey, Rev Walden, but you know, I'm fortunate <laughs> enough, I get to call you mom. What's up, mom? Hey, how you doing today? Yeah. <coughs> Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank it's, you. It's your first time on the Morning Update it is, show. It is. I know it was a few different times we were supposed to connect, but it's your, yeah. your first time here. It is, yeah. I mean, I'm excited to have you. A bit nervous as well. Oh, well, it's all good. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Huh? It's all good. All right. Well, you know, today's Throwback Thursday, and, you know, Atrana, Atrana talked about as a founder of Mothers for Police Accountability. Um, three decades ago, yes, and, and <laughs> even now today, um, a commissioner and co-chair of the Community Police Commission. So three three decades later, and, and actually, uh, Mothers for Police Accountability back then was called Mothers uh, 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 against, against Police Harassment, harassment. Mm -hmm. and it started right here <coughs> in the Central District. That's right. Right, right, right here in the CD. Yeah, that's right. So we're gonna, we, our time is a bit short today, uh, unfortunately, but we're gonna jump right into, and it's Throwback Thursday, so basically what I'm doing is we're setting a timeline here and kind of go, go through time and then we're gonna discuss what's going on right now with Mothers uh, for Police Accountability, what you got going on, and, and kind of the current state of things. That's okay with you? Yeah. All right, well, the, the first clip is a few minutes long, but it sets the stage. This is, this is just about 30 years ago, and what, what happened was is that the Seattle Police Department um, pulled over my brother and some friends in front of our house there on 29th and Jackson, and man, I was, I was 15 years old, um, they ended up taking us to jail, and man, the police beat us up at the East Precinct, you know, and then it did charge us and some of everything else. <coughs> Long story, but that that happened in 1990. This is an actual show from Network X. Dave Fisher, rest in peace. Um, I was a freshman in college when this interview was recorded. I think you can actually find the whole interview on the Converge, mm -hmm. um, on the Converge uh, social media pages. But this is Network X from 2000 and, and, I mean, from 1994, talking about the incident that happened in 1990. Well, uh, the case came about after an incident on August 5th, 1990, when the Seattle, uh, a rookie police officer stopped, uh, uh, did a U-turn on Jackson to uh, 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 write a ticket to some young boys coming home from an event. And as a result of him making that stop, uh, uh, he called for a backup, and uh, it was a lot of uh, heated uh, 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 conversations, and uh, eventually four boys was arrested and uh, roughed up. Two of the boys were, and two of the boys that was kind of roughed up was my sons. And out of that, uh, because of that incident, uh, 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 we formed an organization called Mothers Against Police Harassment, and uh, the, the uh, criminal charges uh, was um, dropped against Omahi, uh, uh, but we were suing the city for um, violating his civil rights, and that would, that's the case that we're here talking about. Um, it was August 5th, 1990. My brother, three friends were coming back from the Black Community Festival. It was the last evening. And um, it's right when they were turning the corner of 29th and Jackson coming to our house. Um, the officer, Atkins, he said he saw a burnt out license plate lamp. And he decided to bust a U-turn and stop him right there in front of our house. So my brother's two friends got out the car and came into the yard. Now being the rookie cop where he was and scared and paranoid of black people, I don't know, you know. I don't know what's po going possibly, on. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Possibly. By his action, he Why called he for backup. It. Fourteen officers, eight pol patrol cars uh, came to the scene. The whole G sector, that's the whole sector that patrols the Central District, and two Charlie sector officers arrived to the scene of 29th and Jackson for a burnt out license plate lamp. From there, the, the situation <laughs> just escalated. Um, <laughs> the officers, they. Uh, it was, it was a real experience for me. That was my first time really dealing with the police on that <laughs> scale. They, okay. they, uh, 
<laughs> Some of the comments we heard, I remember one officer, uh, a sergeant, well, uh, an acting sergeant, I suppose. He still isn't a sergeant, but challenged my brother, do you want to fight? Do you want a piece of me and this and that? So we had a heated debate going on back and forth because my brother, he's a honor, he was an honor student in Garfield that year, graduated in 90. He was going to the University of Redlands. Another one of the fellas uh, was uh, going to the University of Washington, just graduated for his uh, uh, electrical engineering degree, and two other uh, fellas, you know, were on their way. And, um, you know, that was, that was our argument. You know, they're college students. What are you stopping them for? They haven't broken any laws. You know, what's the big deal for 14 officers? 14. You know, and so uh, from there, uh, I guess they decided to arrest us. We were too big of a public nuisance for them. And uh, they grabbed me first down the stairs. I, at that time, I wore glasses trying to look pretty for your TV. Show. Okay, so you weren't actually in the car. You were what, no, in the house? No, they, they were in the glass. They were in the car. I was in the house. I saw my brother being uh, stopped by the police. And I came outside, Okay. you know, to join in with him. Um, from there, after the arrest, um, well, during the arrest, I was grabbed. I was about four steps up. They grabbed me off the stairs, um, slammed me onto the police car. My glasses, which I was wearing then, came off. And I had really poor vision. I was pretty disoriented from there. But um, Now, was this one police officer that grabbed you? Oh, yeah, it was one police officer okay. at first. And it was um, another officer uh, assisted him. And I was slammed onto the car, hit my chest, then my head. And um, my arrest was affected. And they got two other people. They my brother last. They, uh, they shackled his shackled his hands and the feet. He was transported that way to the East Precinct. He went um, in front of Judge uh, Carroll. He's, I think, I believe he's the police he's auditor now. Police, uh, yeah, monitor. Well, yeah, we, we went in front of <laughs> Judge Carroll. Or PR man. And um, the case, it was dismissed in, in under 10 minutes in court. You know, the, the case the case was dismissed. But what gets me is the the uh, the police department made a big deal over misdemeanor charges. I was charged with obstruction of justice. Um, okay, obstruction of justice. Let's see, police harassment, which meant that the police officers were scared of a 15-year-old boy in a t-shirt, shorts, and tennis shoes with no shorts on. Mind you, 14 armed police officers were scared of a skinny little 15-year-old kid. I was charged with police harassment, obstruction of justice, and uh, I forgot, I'm forgetting the other charge now. So but you're uh, saying four teenagers against 14 police. Yeah. And these uh, are the, you guys harassed these police apparently. Yeah, we, uh, apparently we, har we harassed the, these officers. You know, to get a harassment charge for, from the police, that means those police officers were scared for their lives. So that's four men. Were, uh, back then, we were boys. <laughs> you know, I still don't consider myself a man yet. Back then, boys, we were going to cause bodily harm to them with all 14 guns against us, shotguns in the car and all that. So we got that charge, but um, they brought out the pro top prosecutor, Jim Wesley. They brought out the top prosecutor for misdemeanor charges. This is a juvenile prosecutor? This is juvenile. Okay. They brought out their top juvenile prosecutor for ju for misdemeanor charges. They weren't even felony offenses. They were misdemeanor charges. But uh, Judge Terrence Carroll dismissed the charges, and from there we went on to a civil case. Now, obviously, he dismissed it for lack of evidence, or he what? He dismissed. Well, there was there was a 911 tape that the police were relying on for their police harassment charge. The police had alleged that we were cussing them out and threatening to kill them and this and that. Well, of course not. We weren't doing that. But they alleged that it was on a 911 tape. One of the officers in that sworn deposition, which is admissible in a court proceeding, said, "Yeah, I heard him. You can hear him on the tape." So we said, "Cool, let us hear the tape." Uh, we made numerous. Numerous, numerous. We uh, we uh, asked the pr uh, the prosecution to supply us with the tape. All we wanted, we wanted the tape. Let us hear the tape. Well, for some reason, uh, it fell on deaf ears and the tape was erased. So we never got to hear the evidence. And it's what you call exculpatory uh, evidence. I'm sorry if my pronunciation is a little sure. wrong. That means that the evidence might help the defense, which we were in that case. And because the tape was uh, destroyed, we weren't able to get the evidence off the tape that would help our case, the defense. And so Judge Terrence Carroll dismissed the case. that mom yeah all, all, all those years ago mm. three decades yep. you know I was I used to tell people and it's still valid right now in the Central District and uh, in the early 90s you know it was wild man we, it was weed seed out here I mean man it was the police had no regard in our community uh, being jacked and I, all wasn't, the time. I wasn't <laughs> the first person to to get Jack by as you say, Jack by the That's police. Right. You had the police come through in the Astro vans. They used to jump out the vans That's and right. everything, That's take right. pictures. I actually got a thing That's about right. that. But it was like, my mom, 
was the one who was like, and it was like, you know, you had your own career going and everything else, but you were like, yo, man, I need to take a stand for my children's rights and for rights of other people. And three decades ago, you started what is now Mothers for Police Accountability. And I always felt so fortunate in, in that there's a lot of people that we know who, who we, we know it's gone all bad, but they never had the support like I had. And you, uh, man, you, you, you didn't have to do what you did, and you're, you're still out here. <laughs> you're still out here doing what you do. Well, you know, one thing about, thank you so much, uh, is it, uh, yeah, because you know why, at that time, they wanted to say all our kids are gang members are bad. I mean, you know, somebody had to stand up for kids who was doing everything right. No, and the police was jacking kids, and we, we needed to let people know what jacking means. And made, they, made, they made you get out the car, take the position, and put guns to your head. 100%. That's what was going on in the central area. 100%. Uh, th that's what was going on uh, uh, in, in, in 1990, all the way up to 1993. Mm -hmm. It was going on, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, asking people to, uh, they were taking pictures of ki uh, uh, young black kids, putting them in the car, call them the fur report. And then they roll up on you, and uh, they see you, take a picture, put it in the car, and then everybody, and it goes out that you were a gang member when you had no gang affiliation at all, all that stuff that was going on. Right, and if you recall, at the, at the time, because of weed and seed, police departments were getting federal dollars That's based right. upon the number of active gang members That's that right. they had. And That's so right. what the Seattle Police Department would do at the time, they'd jump out of the Astro van, and they'd sit there and take your picture. That's right. the, the police were trying to, and it was a, it was a whole campaign, and That's actually, right. let me, um, I'm going to skip to number 13, Daryl. There, there was a whole campaign that, that mothers at the time had pushed to tell people, it's like, man, this is, it's not okay right. for the police to sit there and take a picture, picture of somebody and they're not under arrest. Right. If, they're not, if they're not arresting them there. Could put up, put up number 13, Daryl? This was, you know, it's funny, people, people talk about the National Lawyers Guild right now. They're playing a big part in, in the protests and everything else. People see them with the, with the uh, neon green hats. This is from the National Lawyer Guild newsletter in 1991. Is that what it says there, Daryl? Mm -hmm. 1991. Um, written by Lynn, by Lynn Wilson. <laughs> so in 19, She's still with us. <laughs> 1991 was 30 years ago. Yeah. So when people, people hear National Lawyers Guild right now, they might think it's some new thing on the scene. The National Lawyers Guild, 30 years ago, was, was, was working with you to be able to get information out here in the Central District to black youths and their parents in the Central District that the police, what their tactic at the time was to take the pictures of, of black youth, especially black men who were not under arrest, to be able to take that photo and say that they were gang members to be able to get federal dollars. Right. And it was, it was mothers, at the time, Mothers Against Police it's Harassment harassment. And the National Lawyers that's Guild, good. that's right. They got this information that's out. Right. You saw there in that clip. It was black. This was old school newsletter, so it went into the <laughs> mail and it got handed out. <laughs> so I mean, it's kind of interesting because, unfortunately, a lot of the work hasn't changed. Right, right. And it's just that's the right. means of it. That's right. That's right. And in some places, we we made some we made some one steps and two steps back. So, I mean, I. I Clearly, there has been some changes, but it has not been changed enough uh, because we're dealing with, uh, as everybody say, an uh, institution that continuously uh, was built on hatred and is still there. But I know that I know personally that we have some good officers and some good people who are actually trying to do good things, uh, and they're working in a system uh, that's, uh, that's polluted, but they stay uh, because they want to do something about it and, and to stay in there. Uh, over time, you know, I, I, I've, I've developed that. And one of the things we've done is that we stayed at the table. We never took mm -hmm. our marbles and went home. We stayed at the table because if a change was going to be made, we knew that somebody had to stay with the consistency of staying. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, what, what made us so popular is that we always told the truth. If mother said it, it was true. We never wanted to disappoint the people. So many times in leadership, people say something, and then they find out that the people are not telling the truth. And, uh, and we wanted to be the organization that says if mother said it, it was true. We, be we built our career on that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And we got, a, I'm a, we got a section here where we could talk about 
further expand upon what's going on right now in, in policing. Um, so number 12 now, Daryl, if you could if you could bring that one up. <clears throat> so this was also this was 1991, the ACLU almost 30 years ago, the ACLU, the Civil Libertarian Award right here, you and Janice Bell. Uh, one of the co-founders of, uh, at the time, Mothers Against Police Harassment. And so again, people people talk about the ACLU. I've been going back and forth with the ACLU during the protests and everything else. 30 years ago, you won the ACLU Civil Libertarian Award. And we've had a, lot, a long relationship with the ACLU. They're one of the first uh, groups that we've worked for, uh, with uh, uh, since after the Red Scare, uh, the McCarth McCarthy years. We were the first group that they had a co coalition with, and uh, they were very, uh, very, very helpful for us, uh, them and the Defenders Association. Because remember, we were, you wouldn't remember, but we were novice. We didn't know anything about policing, I mean, uh, at all. But we knew that we were on the right side of history. I didn't know how to write the complaints. I mean, other people helped us with the complaints. Uh, we needed to know something about the law that we didn't understand. It's called the ACLU. Julia was working there then. Uh, then I would call uh, uh, the, the uh, Defenders Association, uh, Bob Brookerwitz, and somebody always in the Defenders Office always called us back. Then we started uh, with the, uh, we went to late night, we created the what you do when you get stopped by the police. I remember that. Yeah, no, and we were yeah. teaching people. We had, uh, we had our black attorneys out there. They call them teach-ins now. That's right. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were, yeah, yeah, we were out late nights and stuff like that, uh, just trying to tell people what their rights are and let them know they didn't have to get their pictures taken. Uh, and what they're doing to get stopped by the police. And one thing we wanted to tell them, the most macho thing you can do is to be quiet. Because everything you say will be used against you. Mm -hmm. Because when they write up their report, they're going to lie. So the best thing you can do is say, may I have an attorney? Am I a suspect of a crime? If I am, I need an attorney. If, I, if not, may, am I free to go? Mm -hmm. That's what we were doing a long time ago. <laughs> a long, long time ago. <coughs> you know, these days, I guess you look at an app. But, uh, yeah, yeah, they got a nap now. <laughs> but but we know. had the little cards, and we were out on the streets at night. Uh, uh, you know, whenever the police stopped somebody, uh, us little women, uh, Fish Simon, and this is our eighth, uh, Carmen Best was our eighth police chief. Fish Simon used to say, these little old women, he said, if they had husbands, they would be home. That's what he would say. He said, these little old women, they don't have no husbands. That's why they're out making trouble for the police, is what Fish Simon, the police chief, would say. And then they moved it. They watched us for two years. Yeah, they, make, that's true. They, they moved across the street in the 29th in Washington to watch us to see if we were bad, uh, what kind of women we were. And on Friday night, we were standing in the window and pull up ZZ Hill, Hill oh, oh, uh, oh the, 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 wait, uh, what is the blues uh, by ZZ Hill, and we would be dancing in the window, and they'd be watching us, uh, you know. They watched us for two years, but they couldn't get nothing on us. We, I suspect we got a file somewhere. I, I don't think that people today, I mean, people today, would not recognize what policing in Seattle was no, they 30 wouldn't. years ago. No, it would not. No, it would the not. Man, the police used to, I'm sorry, man, the police used to jump and whip people's ass. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. With no like, body cameras. Like real deal. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? You you had officers who moved around and, and you know, like like RoboCop. Right? That's man, right. That's what you call him. But, 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 but he, man, but he, that was his, man, he embodied that. Right. That's like, right. Man, I mean, it was, man, right. it was crazy. It was if crazy. People, if people would have seen what policing was but like heck. here. 30 years being being in high school at Garfield, man, and it was, woo, I yeah, mean, it's, yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's something else. Yeah. Now, I got a, a, a clip right here where people people also don't realize before all of this, this stuff back um, <clears throat> almost a half century ago, you know, that, that you and my dad started Salisbury Photography. Photography, that's right. Um, you know, with the help of Mr. Fitzgerald Mr. Beaver. Fitzgerald, that's right. That's right. right. What a Fine. wonderful man. man. Mr. Rest Fitzgerald in peace. Be yes. Beaver. For you guys that don't know, the Fax newspaper right. was started by Mr. Fitzgerald that's Beaver. Right. Mm -hmm. So he started Salisbury Photography that's all right. over 50 years ago, the very first black uh, photography studio in the, in the Pacific Northwest, you know, right over here off, uh, off of 23rd. And I bring that up because even now, and I know you don't ever like me to tell your age on, on TV, so I won't. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, good. But, but even yeah. now, if you put up this, uh, this clip number 14, Daryl, uh, even now, you know, it, it, you're still finding a way, getting your message out and everything else. You host a show every week on <laughs> KKNW, 11.50 <laughs> a.m. KKNW. The Mother's Justice Show got a few shots in there of yep. me and you when yep. you had me out there. I tell people all the time, you know, a lot of people when the protests came up, Mom, 
a lot of people were like, oh, it's the citizen journalist guy. Must have been sitting at home with his, with his uh, cell phone. And now he said, people don't, people don't realize, yes, I've had a 20-year career before Seattle protest 2020 started. That's right. But also on top of that, you know, I mean, I, I tell people, it's like, man, media is in me. It's, it's, right. it's not on right. me. Going, going right. all the way back, you know, a half a century ago. And to the fact that my mom still has her show. You guys need to tune in every Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. on Monday. 11. Oh, I'm sorry. You Monday. Might, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're always on point. Every Monday from 2 to 3 at 11.50 a.m. KKNW. And I, I had a little radio show on at, at, what a speakeasy. Remember, I had the yeah, low wattage. Speakeasy. I was on the air. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's right. I go pirate radio. Yeah, I was on pirate radio. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing music. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not it's not happenstance. It's not anything <laughs> like that that we 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 end up you know like I said right here. And I tell people all the time, my mama show is usually way more organized than mine <laughs> any any day. No. Uh, um, so I got I got a clip right here for today. Basically, this was in the <clears> shop. Um, this was June 9th of, of this year. You can put that one up there, June, June 9th of this year. And you came and you, you visited uh, the CHOP. And, you know, uh, the, the CHOP is a, is a place that when it, was, when it was up there, a lot of people stayed away, especially a lot, of, a, lot of, um, a lot of legacy people, a lot of legacy leaders and everything else. They never made it into the CHOP. Right. Why did you come to the CHOP? Well, I came number one because my son was there, I, I, and I wanted to make sure that you know that you're all right, you know, and uh, you know, and that that uh, number one. And I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to see, uh, I wanted to see uh, what uh, what it looked like. I mean, I wanted to see, I wanted to be there, um, and uh, I wanted to just. Um, I wanted to understand that. Oh, there uh, it is. Okay, yeah, we got no. up on, on the screen, on the yeah. screen right there. <coughs> yeah, I just came up there. I wanted to see. I, I mean, wanted to see what the protest was, and to make sure that uh, I wanted to see my son and uh, know that he was all right. And, and I wanted to meet Bobby Steele. Bobby, I wanted to meet. Hey, Bobby. He said, <laughs> he said, Bobby, you know, I need the postman. I need something. And this guy shows up, and I thought he was not Santa Claus, but who was this guy? He's always showing up. I need this guy. I need some water. You know. And but I said, well, did he have a grocery store in his pocket? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then he needed the he needed the mass. And you know, he said, well, who's this guy bringing my son all this stuff? He must he must have a van somewhere. He just got, he got a, a van full of full of uh, 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 protest equipment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it seemed like, you know. you know. So I just needed to come up there, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry that uh, a lot of folks didn't come because I think they missed a real opportunity to come up there, and uh, you know, and just to pass out water and to do some other kinds of things. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and I think that a lot of people realize when people were saying that the protests. I mean, the 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 actual minutes of police interaction or hours of police interaction compared to the actual hours of protest is, is very small and I think is why I wrote a blog post about it at the time that I think people missed an opportunity not necessarily to be on the front it's crazy on the front line I would want my mama on the front line you know what I'm saying no but no. but there's so especially many when he said to, share the scream share it share it you know <laughs> share it call the mayor call the mayor call everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know, I do that, and you're right. That that day, that night, it was something that Seattle had really never seen. It's in a residential neighborhood, no. and the only thing that I could think of was, man, we have to. You know, I mean, the mayor controls the police at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, man, tweet the mayor, calm it down. Calm, and that's what you're supposed to do. I mean, I'm like, yo, man, and it's way too much tear gas out here. Calm oh, that's yeah. That's what my mama would do. My mama would Yeah, do. you know, thanks. Like, Jenny, now you know it's too much I did. I called gas. her. See? I called her. I mean, See? I called her up and said, you know, you need to, you need to stop it. See? I stop it, you know. Stop it. That's what I said, you know. I got that number on speed dial. My boy's up there. Let's cut that out. It, it, it comes <laughs> on. You know that that day with that that picture. Uh, you know, I posted something here on the Instagram and said my mom came to visit me and she her words, be brave, be honest, be fair. And bring your butt home safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, but, and before I go on to this next slide here, man, you know, this is the first time that I've actually seen a lot of this footage. It's been the last the few days. I never, we put it out, we never really looked again um, for a lot of different reasons. And we put up the slide uh, um, 
two or three days ago that showed the tear gas on Capitol Hill. Right. And I'm wheezing there and you can barely breathe. Yep. And man, I wanted to tell you, I'm sorry. Like, I, I mean, it, 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 it's, it took on a whole different kind, you know, because you call, I just, you let me know when you get home safe. But every you night, call, you for every like, night, for 30 nights or 40 nights or how many nights or whatever yeah, nights you went out there. I mean, I did not go to bed until you tell me you were safe. And then that last time when they used whatever it was, that your skin was burning for uh, yeah. for uh, from all that Saturday and that night and you know yeah July 25th yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah well you know I never thought that uh, you know uh, Seattle police would uh, act uh, 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 to be t totally out of compliance I mean it's what they've done I mean it's like they threw the baby out with the bathwater and uh, the officers knew better a lot of them did you know yep. yeah mm -hmm. I mean and speaking of that OP OPA is supposed to actually rule on a few on a few cases mm -hmm. tomorrow but. Yeah. I just, I wanted to tell you that it isn't until, and it's actually, it's traumatizing to actually watch this footage. Yeah. We were trying to do a clip um, every day this week, but I was like, man, I can't watch mm -hmm. this, you know, and so um, I could only imagine you watching it. I never watched it. Well, I I'm couldn't, I, I mean, I, you know, you know, as I say, I protect myself from some things, but <clears throat> I always have people who give me a blow-by-blow -blow description. Yeah, shout out to Darnell Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get people that call yeah. me up, and uh, I, the same way I, w when all the uh, electives showed up there that Saturday night, people kept calling me, he's all right, you know, he's all right, and, and that kind of stuff. But I just have this way of, if I watch it, it'll do something to me that I won't be able to move well, the next I'm, day. I'm and glad uh, you ain't watching so, that. And so I did watch it, it the funky. other day. The other day when you mm. put it on was the first time I, uh, I'd ever watched it, and it looked like Beirut. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, really, it, did, it, did, it really did. It looked like, oh, it looked like a real war zone. I mean, and to know that uh, we paid them. They got paid by us that day, you know, I mean, to be able to do that, you know, because they're not... Uh, they're not public servant, I am. They're public employees. We need to change the language. Mm. All city employees, they they're public employees. Mm. And, uh, and, and to, and to uh, spray people that way, and, and they, uh, the media was clearly, uh, I mean, you know, we're always clearly, uh, clearly marked, you know, with our skin. But the media <laughs> were clearly marked yeah, with their I mean, vest on and with no, their... No doubt. They it, worked <coughs> the media over July 25th. What? Yeah, they <laughs> did. You know, they were clearly, uh, you know, uh, yeah, just like, oh, okay. But through all of that, I'm going to keep my kind of humanity. I will never, ever, ever go down to the level of the enemy of the people who hate me. Never. Amen. I will Amen. never, ever, ever crawl on my belly. I will never ever treat somebody the way they've treated me. It's my pr principle, it's my character, and it's my training. My grandmother taught me to never be a hater. Best thing she ever taught me. Her husband, her first husband got lynched by some white people. But she told me, you'll never be a hater. I walk through life, I will never waste my time hating white people, never. And I don't care what happens, I will never go there. Never. You know, it's, uh, I think a lot of people might get it honest, uh, to see why I get it honest too. There's a lot of people who saw a lot of this footage and like, man, how come you don't, you're not more vicious and you're not more this, you're not more that. And I tell them, man, like, hate don't dwell in my heart. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got my, I make my moves, believe me. But, you know, it's, it's not hate that gets me out of the bed every right. morning. Oh, it's, yeah. you no. know. For me, it's love. Yeah. What gets me out of bed every morning is the little children, you know, that we don't see them at the bus stop right now, but we would. They got bright eyes. They got bright eyes. I work for the children because you know what? They are so idealistic. The children are the only people in the world <clears throat> that believes a stranger that they don't know is going to come to their house on Christmas. They believe that. That's the belief I want to have. I want to believe that. I want to believe like the children do. That's why I get up. I don't care what. They still stay, they're still full of hope, you know? you know? And we miss seeing the bus stops. We miss seeing the little pretty dresses and the little kids all bushy and bright. That's what I work for. I work for them. I might not be out there with them right now, 
for my prayer for them. I work for them, and that's what gets me up in the morning. It's like, wow, these children, and I worry about the education. That's the next thing I'm going to be on. Our children are going to be left behind because they're all the parents are not equal. See, so we it's for the children. I know it's a better world because I'm part of clear. I'm creating it. It's all in consciousness. Whatever you want, you got to create it. So wow. I'm creating that world. Man, I got so many more. Fi I think I think uh, maybe Bobby Stills can produce a special down there. Me and me and uh, me and you, mom. Um, bef before we before I let you go here, I know there's uh, it's a lot of people very probably very interested in your opinion. Thirty years um, in in this ecosystem here, it's starting off with a Fitzsimmons who said that you 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 women need to go get some 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 husbands so and, and stay out the police business. All the way to a Chief Carmen Best, who you know, 20, 26, 27 years. Six. So imagine Chief Best. You, you were on the outside of that police system. Chief Best was on the inside of that police system, underneath right. Fitzsimmons, right. right. and 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 transgressed through it. Chief Best is now retired. We have uh, Chief uh, Adrian Diaz right. there. Um, any of your <coughs> thoughts on Chief Chief Best uh, uh, as far <coughs> as her career? her exit from the Seattle Police Department, and then Chief Diaz looking into the future. Well, I, you know, I'm, I was really, uh, <coughs> we worked really hard to get Carmen to be the police chief, and I like to always let people know why. One of the reasons why is because they changed the rules, and they said if you bring in a new police chief, he's going to bring in a whole command staff. So everybody in the command staff would have been bused back to a captain. And that means that you, now, you Carmen would never ever get up the ladder again, uh, I actually to be assistant chief unless, unless you serve at that pleasure. But Carmen worked her way up. She was a decent person. I, I, Carmen did a good job. I mean, uh, she was only there for two years. And it's amazing how the community hold her hostage for two years and let Fish Simon and everybody else who absolutely cemented this system this built way. Built the culture. Built, uh, I, I, I get away, you know. O2 was here for four years. Uh, nobody talks about what she did or did not do. And so I, and so what I saw out there, I, in my, my own honest opinion of doing this for 30 years, I saw the police uh, do a mutiny. The best way to get a police chief out is do a mutiny. They did that on Norm Stamper and WTO. They stood down and let people tear up down town. Nobody was ever arrested. They did the same thing this time, starting on May 29th. Also, there was a change in the guard. Uh, uh, the new President Gill is a, uh, is a guy who wants to make America great again. Uh, Kevin Stuckey was a black guy. I, I, and I, I, I just know under Kevin Stuckey's watch, uh, what we saw out there would not have happened because he would have had a lot more control in what the police officers did or I uh, was making sure that that didn't happen. And so what we saw was uh, the police, uh, 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 you know, making America g great again, uh, also being hardliners. I mean, because uh, a lot of the police officers did not want to be up on a consent decree. They did file a case, uh, and the case was dismissed. But unfortunately for Seattle, up until May 24th, uh, the city was in compliance with all of the standards almost, for, for, uh, and they were trying to get from under the uh, up under the consent decree. Uh, they had filed uh, the Community Police Commission. We filed uh, to uh, ask the judge not to allow them to come out from under the consent decree because of the accountability system piece that was still dangling out there. But Carmen is retired, uh, and I believe that uh, uh, Chief a uh, Adrian Diaz is going to do a great job. I, I really do. I mean, I, I think he's going to do a good job. I mean, you know, police officers, the police chief uh, has a, b a tough way to go. I mean, he serves at the pleasure of the police. But the, but, but the contract is, is between the city and the police uh, officers, not the police chief. And people think that that's, they think it's differently, but it's not, see. It's, it, the chief serves at the pleasure of the, uh, of the mayor. See. Right. Man, well, like I said, uh, thank you. Um, I I appreciate you. Uh, you know, it was tough last night looking at um, looking at all these the, the historical looking at your website, uh, Mothers yeah, for Police thank Accountability. You. Thank you. And it, it was tough because you know, I mean, sometimes we move too fast, and we don't we don't live in the moment. And I've, I've seen a, a thirty years 
a dedication and commitment. And like I said, it was a lot of people's kids who was getting smacked up by the That's SPD right. 30 right. years ago. Right. But but you took a stand. And you know, what started off as just some little, some little ladies in the Central District. <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying, 30 years later, um, you know, you stand tall out there. Thank you. And you know, and I'm glad that you came out there, even when the chop was there. You 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 showed you showed a lot of leadership in the community. You were present, and that's what matters. Someone you know, you were present there, and and thank you, mom. Well, thank you, you know, you're welcome. And you know, I did what I had to do, and nobody's standing up. I had to stand up for my kids. You know, somebody had to stand up for kids. You know, everybody's. I mean, we weren't gang members. You know. And we weren't, we were just regular people. So hey, I stood up for my children. And in the process, I stood up for all the children in Seattle. And for many people we've helped, we're not only children, but we helped uh, uh, so many people we've helped over the years. We went to court with people. The judges knew when, uh, when mothers, when I step in the courtroom, something, uh, people know there's something wrong with the case. I don't use my chips often, but when I step in the courtroom, you're gonna find some action in there. Because like I say, we tell the truth. And yes, we force it. We force the pros we force the pros uh, the public defenders on some cases to to put some investigators out there, but so we can get the truth out here. And everybody, uh, you know, so yeah. But we did all this, and we had no training. You know, we not attorneys, but we've had good people. God always sent good people. We've had good people. We had people to be with us. Uh, Lynn Wilson has been with me 28 years. That attorney that wrote that article, Lonnie Nelson, late Lonnie Nelson, she was with me for 22 years, she passed away, you know. So we've all grown up, all got, you know, we've all matured doing justice work. Yeah. If we could have fixed it 30 years ago, we would have, but this is continuing. I take a long view of history. It took 157 years for me and you to be in this room together. Yeah. You know? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, son. Uh, we're going to take a very, very quick break right now, um, and we'll be right back. You're watching the Morning Update Show.